hi guys welcome back to dream simplified youtube channel so we'll continue with chapter five essentials of medical physiology by sampling gum the case sampling gum and the topic is termed acid base balance the outline from the textbook is first of all the introduction hydrogen and ph you have determination of acid base status the regulation of acid base balance disturbances of acid base status then the clinical evaluation which has to do with your anion gap so let's start what of introduction when you check you have to know the basic definition of the donor or acceptor of all these uh, normal protons and then you remember that there's another definition of acid and base apart from what you know that acid is a substance that tends to produce proton and when an acid loses its proton it turns to what we call conjugate base so it's kind of contradicting and then when a base gains a proton it's a substance that gains a proton when it gains this proton it transform into a conjugate acid it's just the opposite because it's now as that proton and what as a proton should be an acid so that's one of an introduction and then an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ion as the only positive ion when dissolved in aqueous solution mind me i didn't say water because there might be other aqueous solutions that are not water why base is opposite the one that produces only hydroxide ion as the only positive ion when dissolved in water or aqueous solution then hydrogen and ph is just telling you that for you to get your pH is the negative log of hydrogen to the base of 10. It's normal chemistry, you know, but this is physiology. It might be a bit complex, like telling you things like acidosis and alkalosis. When you are studying your chemistry, you didn't hear anything like acidosis, alkalosis. Well, now acidosis, you know, you have pH scale ranging from 0 to 14. When you have pH below 7, it is acidic. And the acidity tends to increase the further it goes be below the, the 7. And when you have pH above 7, you say this is alkalinity and the pH increases as the alkalinity increases too. So that's why we have acidosis and alkalosis. Why pH 7 is neutral? Normal healthy person, a pH of plasma or you can call it extracellular fluid or interstitial fluid, internal milieu, internal environment of the cell is usually 7.4. It's a range between 7.38 to 7.4. It varies. So it's not specific. Then you have pH of some hydrogen ion concentrations. The determination of acid base status has to do with the ratio of your acid to base. So how do you get such ratio? Use what we call anderson hasselbach equation. And this equation says that pH equal to pK plus logarithm of the conjugate base over the acid. In the normal body, uh, the CO2 is the greatest producer of acid, acidity. So what you usually say is that this CO2 will function as the acid in this anderson hasselbach equation. That's why you see CO2 here. Not that it's a potential acid, but because of its ability to form acid. And the acid they form is called volatile acid. And the normal acid base status or acid to base ratio is usually 1 ratio 20 because your pK is usually 6.1 when you check it. And the regulation of acid base balance. We can't do with the regulation of acid base balance without touching the two different types of acid we have in our body. We have different types of acid everywhere else, like the strong acid, the weak acid, the concentrated acid, the dilute acid. But inside the body of you and I, what we just have is either volatile acid or non-volatile acid. Volatile acid has to do with the ones derived from CO2. That's the large quantity of CO2 in the body. It usually causes acidity. And you know, CO2 is usually excreted by the lungs. So when it mixes with water, maybe alveolar region, it tends to form this volatile acid. And then any other acid you get apart from a source called CO2 is called non-volatile acid. And you can derive them from your methionine, your cysteine, all those um, sulfuric acid, all those ones, the acid sulfur containing amino acids, those ones are examples. Then what are the compensatory mechanisms for these um, pH changes in the body? Maybe if it doesn't balance well, you have normal acid based profile system and also respiratory mechanism, even the renal mechanism, all those stuffs, they help you to regulate your acid base balance. Let's look at acid base balance regulation by the acid base buffer system. A buffer is a kind of solution of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So let's assume on one side it already has itself and then it's dissociating to give its conjugate base. So that's what constitutes a buffer, not strong acid, it's actually a weak acid to kind of withstand certain changes in the body and then it won't really alter the pH of the body as much. The types of buffer we have are the bicarbonate buffer system, the phosphate buffer system and the protein buffer system. Bicarbonate buffer system has to do with the one that uses your bicarbonate. 
HCO3 minus as normal bicarbonate is known it's usually present in plasma it has extracellular fluid and what's the mechanism it's usually when you have a kind of high acidity in the body you know acid reserve in the body is usually very very high and you have high acidity like having HCl that is very very acidic it tends to combine with the precursor of your bicarbonate which is sodium hydrogen tricarbonate 4 and instead of having so much acidity in form of HCl you are now having what we call the carbonic acid and sodium chloride carbonic acid is broken down by an enzyme into the CO2 and water. What's the name of that enzyme? Carbonic anhydrase. This CO2 will be excreted by the lungs and it will not really affect the homeostatic balance of the body. So that's the bicarbonate buffer system. But it has an issue according to this sampling we are using. It's usually that you know normal um, pH of plasma is 7.4, but the pKa of the bicarbonate buffer system is 6.1. So is there's a huge difference between the pKa of what you are using, the kind of buffer bicarbonate, and the pH of extracellular fluid, up to like one there, which is a very big gap. So it doesn't really become all the efficient when we are dealing with the acid base balance. But we have a better one, which is called the phosphate buffer system that tends to use hydrogen phosphate. And how do we get this hydrogen phosphate? It's usually from the disodium hydrogen phosphate. So the same situation when we see ACL, it tends to form sodium dihydrogen phosphate, which is a kind of weaker acid than your normal ACL and sodium chloride, normal common salt, that's not harmful. Even when you are trying to neutralize, you form salt and water, that salt is not really harmful. So this is a better buffer system to maintain the acid base balance of the body because its pK is usually 6.8. When you compare 6.8 to 7.4, it's closer than when you were dealing with the bicarbonate buffer system. And normally, in our red blood cell, the potassium concentration is usually higher. Because at least you have sodium moving out, but potassium keeps coming in. So the potassium concentration is usually higher when you check it. So that's why it will exist in the form of potassium dihydrogen phosphate. No longer the sodium dihydrogen phosphate that we catalyze that buffer system to maintain acid-base balance. And then you have the protein buffer system. I want to retreat this one because it's not really important. Just know that it's from hemoglobin. You will deal with that on our biochemistry. Then how do we regulate acid base balance by normal respiratory mechanism? Normal you're breathing in and breathing out. When you have closer to your alveolar of the lungs, the bicarbonate and hydrogen ion form from the breaking down of the carbonic acid, tend to combine again, form the carbonic acid again and dissociate again. Why your CO2 produced in that form is now excreted by the lungs. It's a form of maintenance of acid base balance by respiratory mechanism. When you check renal mechanism, when you have a lot of acidity in the body, the body tends to secrete or excrete more hydrogen ion and then retains more bicarbonate. And if the hydrogen ion concentration or the acidity is less, the reverse is the case. Then what's the applied physiology? There are certain disturbances in acid-based status like acidosis, alkalosis. And all these acidosis and alkalosis are split into two. You have the respiratory acidosis or alkalosis and then the metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. I think Sempolingam drew a very big chart here, trying to illustrate everything. Let's go to the last important concept called the clinical evaluation of normal disturbances, all these disturbances of acid-based status, in form of anion gap, when you check anion gap. Anion gap is a kind of the differential diagnosis, all this difference between your unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations, and it's usually 12 milli equivalents per liter when you check it. So that will be all for today. That will be all for today's review of Essentials of Medical Physiology by St. Bullingham. So please try and subscribe so you get updates on new videos. Immediately I up upload new videos, you receive notifications. And don't forget to turn on your notification and also invite your friends to enable them to finish their textbooks with ease. So that will be all for today. Thank you very much for listening.